Hi, Velocity. Great day, isn't it? Sure is, Herc. It's a beautiful sunny day. Just a perfect day to lie on the beach and work on my tan. Hey, Velocity, do you know what star is closest to the Earth? Of course. It's shining on us right now. Our sun. That's right. Our sun is a star, just like all the other stars you see at night. Except our sun is much closer to us than the other stars, so it appears much bigger. But it is actually about medium size as far as stars go. So if we study our sun, we are actually studying all the other stars out there in the universe. On this episode of Rigel Astronomy, we are going to talk about the sun, our very own star. That's wonderful, Herc. Now kindly move it. You are blocking the sun. I'm trying to work on my gorgeous tan here. Let's Explore Astronomy is sponsored in part by... The Sun, the star of our solar system. Without the Sun, none of us would be here. There would be no life on Earth. So studying the Sun not only tells us about the other stars in the universe, but can help unlock the secrets of life itself. First, a very important word of warning. Never, never, never look directly at the Sun. It is very dangerous and will harm your eyes. The last thing you want to do is damage your eyes. Once damaged, they cannot be repaired. So let's all keep our eyesight and not look directly at the sun. We can look at the sun with special solar filters. This type of filter fits over the end of your telescope. Once attached, you can now aim your telescope at the sun and observe. The sun is enormous! It is about 900,000 miles or 1.4 million kilometers across. You could fit a million Earths inside the sun. Now that is huge. But even though our sun looks gigantic, it is actually only an average sized star. Some of the stars in the universe are much bigger. The sun is about 93 million miles away from Earth. That's about 150 million kilometers. And the sun is between 4.5 and, and 5 billion years old. That makes it about middle aged. So our sun will be around for another 5 billion years or so. All through history, many religions has worshipped the sun as a god. Since they were unable to understand or study the sun, they thought anything that big and bright and gave off that much heat and made plants grow must be a god. Probably the most famous sun god was Re in the ancient Egyptian religion. Re was the supreme god above all the other Egyptian gods. According to ancient Egyptians, Re, the sun, traveled around the earth every day through 12 regions at night and 12 during the day, thus 24 total. Today we still divide the day into 24 hours. But every ancient civilization on earth had sun gods, from the Sumerians to the Greeks to the Romans to the Aztecs, even the Hindu, Japanese, and Norse worship sun gods. Because the sun rises and sets each day in the sky, most ancient people thought that the sun revolved around the earth. But about 2200 years ago, the ancient Greek astronomer Aristarchus proposed that the earth moved around the sun instead of the sun moving around the earth. This concept did not really catch on until almost 1800 years later, when in the 16th century, Nicholas Copernicus used scientific analysis to prove that the Earth revolved around the Sun. So what makes the Sun tick? How does it work? The Sun is a gigantic ball of gases, with no surface. About 70% of the Sun is hydrogen, another 28% is helium. The remainder, only 2% of the Sun, is oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. The gravity of the sun is powerful, so powerful, that it holds the planets in an orbit around it. Deep inside the sun, the gravity is of such incredible power and strength that it causes the molecules of hydrogen to crash into each other with such force that they create helium and energy. This is a thermonuclear reaction, creating massive explosions and shooting off vast amounts of radiation. 
The sun fuses 620 million metric tons of hydrogen each second. The heat produced by these thermonuclear reactions reaches 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. The energy created in those explosions is radiation, some of which is light. Not only the visible light we can see with our eyes, but also light in other wavelengths like X-rays, infrared, and ultraviolet rays. Another product of the thermal nuclear reactions is the magnetic fields and small uncharged particles called neutrinos. All of this flies out into space in all directions from the sun. We call this the solar wind. When the solar wind reaches Earth, it provides us with light and heat. Fortunately for us humans on Earth, the Earth's atmosphere blocks out the harmful radiation and keeps us safe. At the center of the sun, that is what we call the core. It is not a rocky core, but a dense gas core. It is here that the thermonuclear reactions take place. The energy then radiates out the radiative zone. The energy then reaches the photosphere and then passes into the chromosphere. The temperatures in the sun decrease as you come out from the core through the photosphere, but then increase as you move through the chromosphere. This came as a big surprise when discovered. Scientists think that the magnetic field waves oscillating through the plasma in the chromosphere are the cause of this increase in temperature. The corona is the outermost part of the sun. Usually we cannot see it because the rest of the sun is so bright. So scientists usually view the corona during eclipses. From time to time, dark spots appear on the sun. These are sunspots, and they are areas of increased magnetic field strength. They appear dark because they are cooler than the rest of the sun. Solar flares can occur near a sunspot where the magnetic fields are opposite. A solar flare is a gigantic explosion of magnetic energy that can be equal to one billion hydrogen bombs being set off at the same time. Sometimes the flare shoots towards the Earth and meets the Earth's magnetic field, causing the aurora at the North and South Poles. Sometimes a cloud of hot plasma is shot out from the sun and loops back. We call this a prominence. But when the hot plasma breaks free from the sun and is shot out into space, it is a coronal mass ejection. And that can cause problems here on Earth. If blown toward the Earth, it can react with Earth's magnetic field and cause electrical and communications problems. So that is what a star is. In future episodes, we will tell you about the life of stars, from their birth to their sometimes explosive end, and how to see this happening for yourself. We will also travel to the Arctic to explain and view the incredible light show we call the Northern Lights, or Aurora. Well, that was interesting, but now I'm getting back to my tan. The sun may be a violent place, but on days like today, it is warm and soothing. Well, I'm going to get my bathing suit on and jump in the water. If I were you, I would put on more sunscreen, or else the electromagnetic radiation from the sun will not give you a nice tan, but instead give you a painful sunburn and turn your face as red as your suit. Ah! Like a ladder me up! Check out our other episodes and let's explore astronomy series at www.tedcookproductions.com slash LEA. You will find all kinds of cool astronomy topics there. Hey, give a shout out to our sponsors, without whom we would not be here. Visit their websites and partake of their services and products. A big thank you to the Yukon Department of Tourism and Culture and Westmark Hotels, Westmark Whitehorse.